Hey YouTube, it's Mark here from Trusted Word Ministries. I hope and pray uh, you're all okay this evening. Just going to bring you a verse video this evening. Um, and it's on 1 Timothy 3.1. And um, the reason I wanted to do this, I actually had uh, another verse video that was to do with bishops. Uh, ready and waiting. I've got a number of these videos that I'm just uh, planning and uh, notes on. It's just a question of finding the right time. And sometimes the right sort of... Uh, article or or news thing or whatever and it sometimes it requires a bit of timing but uh the video that i produced recently about the uh so-called consecration of the first female bishop of the church of england was what prompted me to just re-look at this and lord willing what i would like to do um is post a number of videos on bishops generally um because Obviously, as you would expect with the new versions, the qualifications and descriptions of bishops is either ambiguous or completely destroyed. And also, I've had a number of uh, negative interactions with bishops pretty much since I've been saved. And uh, that hasn't changed, uh, especially uh, late last year, even early this year. Both in the Philippines and the UK, I've had some really disappointing interactions with bishops and uh, it's worth pointing out here that in certainly in 1 Timothy 3 um, the qualifications of the bishops that are listed here there's about 17 of them uh, are not conditional qualifications you don't um, you don't get to pick and choose what you like you qual you have to qualify for everything and um so if we read this, uh, so 1 Timothy 3, chapter one, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, reads as follows. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. And I wanted to read this as well for a number of reasons. Um, obviously, the new versions just completely mess this up anyway. And you'll see the particular problem with this. Um but also, just from my own personal perspective, just, uh, you know, saying it for what it is, I too desire the office of a bishop. I do. I do desire the office of a bishop. Uh, and the Bible tells me because of that, I desire the good work. It's a good thing to desire. However, in verse 6, we're warned uh, to not be a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. That's something that I don't want to do. Now, the Lord hasn't actually uh, enabled me yet to do that. And uh, it's not something that's been set up yet for me. And uh, if we look at uh, uh, just earlier on in the book, uh, 1, 1 Timothy 1 uh, verse 12, Paul is talking about uh, the Lord who hath enabled me for that. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now, being called is different from you know, being enabled and, uh, you know, I'm sure all of us can relate to when we first get saved, we often feel an immediate calling for something. I knew, for example, that I wanted to work in the Philippines and I wanted to serve the Lord there. And I believe that I've been doing that. But have I been enabled yet? Could I rightfully call myself a bishop yet? Not yet. Definitely not yet. But I desire the office of a bishop. You see, there's a difference there. But anyway, uh, I digress a little bit. Um, I do want to read um, uh, what the corruptions are saying. Um, and uh, slightly little different format. Still going to read them in order and just uh, make a couple of points. Um, but really, I want to get at what the new versions are calling a bishop. And also there are some odd changes to them as you would expect um, but this is only verse one so I'm looking to exposit the other verses and talk about those as well uh, going forward and also looking at Titus and just a couple of other points as well but uh, you know being a bishop as I said uh, earlier it's not a, a conditional list of qualifications the standards for a bishop are exceptionally high and rightly so they really should be so let's take a look at what the new versions say about verse one. Uh, I'm just going to read through them. Maybe a couple of them I'll stop and just uh, make a few points. Um, but I think you'll get the general drift of the problem 
when we go through. Um, so just to repeat verse 1, then we'll go on with the corruptions, reads as follows. This is a true saying, so I'm going to emphasise a few things here. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now just a, a, very, a couple of real quick points here. Um, this is a true saying. No doubt, 100%, this is, this is how it is. And we've got confirmation of the fact that a bishop is a male here. So if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Okay, and we've got the type of the role here. We've got the office of a bishop. Okay, just bear that in mind when you hear what the uh, corruptions are saying instead of that. The office of a bishop. And the word bishop is a critical word. And you're going to see why later uh, towards the end of this video. And again, at the very end, you know, it talks about uh, desiring a good work. He desireth a good work. And just, I encourage you uh, to check everything that I'm saying here. Check it all against scripture. Um, uh, one uh, passage that I have noted here is 2 Timothy 2, 14 to 21 in reference to good works. But there are a lot of references to good works uh, in the New Testament. I encourage you to check them out to see what a good work is and what it's qualified as and again it's important to note that 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 those words good work when you listen to what the corruption say because again i can take a word like bishop i could take a word like uh, or a group of words like uh good work and I can search the scriptures and I can see how it all beautifully lines up. Now, the whole point that I try and make in these videos is that um, these corruptions, but just the kind of way that they run roughshod over translation, their translation of an already corrupt manuscript line, it's so inconsistent that you literally cannot make these fantastic connections that we make in the King James Bible. The King James Bible is just so easy to pick up and read you don't need to be a phd to read it it's in plain english that even a child can read and you can make these amazing connections these amazing scriptural connections you can go ah oh, i remember that phrase i remember that word and it's so easy it's so easy but anyway let's look at uh, what the corruptions are saying and i'll let you draw your your own conclusions i mean this is what the words are the plain english words and uh but I'll make a, a couple of points about a few of them. But uh, So let's take a look. So the ESV, the English Standard Version, again, we're talking about 1 Timothy 3 verse 1, says the following. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. OK, just remember that word, overseer. OK, but again, look at these the differences here. Aspiring as opposed to desiring. And a noble task instead of good work. And I'll let you just mull over what that can mean. The Good News Translation reads as follows. This is a true saying. If a man is eager to be a church leader, he desires an excellent work. And again, just think about making those cross references scripturally. Just think about that. And look at this. A church leader. Just think about it again. And and at the end, we're going to talk about a bishop. And you're going to see the massive difference here. The Message Bible, the Messy Bible. Uh, I mean, this is just daft. It says, if anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good. That's the Message Bible. It's just a complete joke. Leadership in the church. And um, he desireth a good work. Uh, it's just good. But notice this part as well. If anyone wants to provide leadership, where's the uh, male focus on this? Where's the man? If anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good. Could be a female, right? The MEV, which is supposed to be a brand new translation using the King James text as its baseline, it's just a, a load of rubbish. Uh, the MEV, this is a faithful saying. If a man desires the office of an overseer, he desires a good work. 
A faithful saying is not the same as a true saying. But much more importantly, and again, they're talking about men here, wonderful. But they're talking about an overseer. And I'm going to demonstrate later why that's a problem. The NIV. Here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Whoever aspires to be an overseer. It's really, really not good. Whoever. Again, there's no male focus there at all. The word overseer appears and it's aspiring. I don't aspire to be a bishop. I desire to be a bishop. And there is a difference. New King James Bible uh, says as follows. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, and it's footnoted to say overseer, and the New King James footnotes basically everything, he desires a good work. So the office has been changed for position, and there's a question mark to say whether it's overseer or not. The New Living Translation, this is a trustworthy saying. If someone aspires to be an elder, and it's footnoted to say overseer or bishop, he desires an honourable position. Aspiring to be an elder, desiring an honourable position. Does that sound right to you? Doesn't sound right to me, I'm afraid. New World Translation, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, scriptures, says this statement is trustworthy. If a man is reaching out to be an overseer, he is desirous of a fine work. And again, you have to look at these corruptions. I mean, that's that's it for the corruptions, by the way. But you have to look at this, you know, reaching out to be an overseer, desirous of a fine work. You've got fine work. Excellent work, noble tasks, honourable positions. Think about doing searches for those phrases in your Bible. You're going to find them anywhere else? I can tell you now, if you do a phrase search for good work or good works, you're going to find countless references in the King James Bible that are going to edify and they're going to underpin <clears throat> what's being said in 1 Timothy 3 1. And again, the key problem here, we've got overseer mentioned many, many times. Now, overseer, and it's important to make this point as well, because overseer does actually appear in the King James Bible. It does. It does. Um, it actually appears seven times. And I encourage you to go and look. Please go and look. Um, and the word overseer itself is not a negative word. It's not that I'm saying, oh, overseer is just terrible. An overseer is something completely different from a bishop. This is the point that I'm trying to make with this video. Um, and it's not the correct word for this office, for this task that we find in 1 Timothy 3. So a, a great example of that is Joseph. And uh, he was made overseer of the house of uh, Potiphar. And... You have to remember, this was a functional role. He was overseeing the running of that house. And it was a administrative role. It wasn't a spiritual role. He wasn't feeding the flock of that house. The The house of, the, uh, of Potiphar prospered and was blessed by his presence materially. So, and you can check that out, by the way, that's in uh, Genesis 39. Just just read that and look at that and then think about what a bishop really is. When you look at uh, verses 2, uh, uh, 1 Timothy 3, verse 1 through to um, uh, through to 7. Yeah, so just take a look at that and, and you know, it, it's not the same as an overseer. It's not the same thing that Joseph was doing. Again, take a look at the word overseer and I'm not saying here that it's a negative word, but it is not the correct word for what we find in 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. It just is not the right word. And, uh, you know, just some, some points here to make, um, I find this really interesting as well. In If you go to Proverbs 6, 6, this is very interesting, actually. Uh, when you think about the word overseer and you go, well, actually, it's not a bad, you know, it's not a bad word to use for that position. OK, let's just take a look at this. 
um, uh, Proverbs 6, verse 6 uh, through to verse 8, reads as follows. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. And I just find that an interesting verse. You know, when it talks about the ants and, uh, you know, which having no guide, no overseer, no ruler, you know. I just find it fascinating that, you know, uh, that the Bible underpins that, uh, you know, that it's not a negative thing, but it's not this particular task that we're talking about in 1 Timothy 3. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Um, now... I don't normally do this, but I've made some, I've just checked a couple of dictionaries here, a regular modern day interpretation of the word uh, overseer, but also uh, the Webster's 1828. Now, I tend not to really use this very much, and I know a lot of Christians love the Webster's 1828 dictionary, and that's fine. It is pretty good, but it's not perfect, and there's a few words that are really just not right and just cause real confusion. Ultimately, the Bible actually has a built-in dictionary and it's very very good as you would expect of course um, and I encourage you when you're checking out words as I did with Overseer for example I would encourage you to check out all seven references um, for the word Overseer check out every reference for the word Bishop and use that to help you define what the word is so for example 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 1 when we're talking about a bishop it's actually um, it's actually that chapter that defines what that word is. And this is what I'm talking about. But for the sake of just getting an understanding of a certain word, uh, we'll take a look at it. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is try and explain kind of what it what it means, I suppose. But again, you know, I'm not not going against the text. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. So a modern day interpretation of the word overseer is a person who supervises others, especially workers. Webster's 1828, which many brethren would, would probably happily reference, uh, is good to illustrate this point. It, there's two, two uh, meanings to this. The first one is one who overlooks a superintendent, a supervisor. And the second one, an officer who has care of the poor, or of an idiot. And I found that actually quite a really telling statement. And again, it goes back to the fact, ultimately, when you look at this, and when you look at uh, the word overseer in the Bible itself, which is the only real reference that means anything, you see this role as being a functional role, an administrative role. It certainly isn't a spiritual role. And that's the point that I'm ultimately trying to make here, that an overseer is no way like a bishop is and again when you look at the qualifications for a bishop that would not be a good list of qualifications for an overseer it just wouldn't be you know when you look at uh you know things like uh you know being patient apt to teach given to hospitality you know of good behavior vigilant sober all these kind of things are not qualifications that you would necessarily associate with an with an overseer um, again, I encourage you to just do your own checking on this. I'm just bringing it to your attention. But really, what I wanted to get at, and I wanted to share some scriptures in closing here. I wanted to ask, you know, whoever's watching this video, is Christ our overseer or is he our bishop? And I wanted to share just a couple of uh, sections of scripture with you just to really reinforce that point, if you permit me to do so. Um and the first one is from uh, Luke 15, and uh, you can read your Bible or just listen, it's entirely up to you. If you are a new version reader, please just uh, be interested to see what you're reading when you read this. But, uh, you know, do consider this this difference in wording from overseer to bishop. And just consider the, just consider the following verses when you think about whether Christ is our overseer or our bishop. And so Luke 15, uh, verses 3 to 7, says here, 
what man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Amen. And I really love that in verse five, right, where it says he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. It's just, you know, it's just beautiful, quite frankly. But in, in closing, please, let's uh, check uh, 1 Peter 2, 25. And uh, I'm sure that some of you probably will know where I'm going with this. And uh, this is just to reinforce really what I was saying, you know, is Christ our overseer or is he our bishop? And this is why every word, brothers and sisters, is so, so important to us, which is why we have to have a perfect Bible. If we don't have a perfect Bible, we quite frankly have nothing. And this is why a word like bishop is so important. So if we look at 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 25, reads as follows. And again, just think about what I just said in Luke 15, 3 to 7. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 25 says... Uh, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Amen. Amen. And if you read, you know, a few verses before that, it's Christ. He's our bishop. The shepherd, capital S, and the capital B, bishop of your souls. Praise God. This is why, this is why, brothers and sisters, I love my bible and why i love my savior and this is why i record these videos defending the bible defending the lord jesus christ because you know he warns us if we're ashamed of him and his words he will be ashamed of us and i'm not ashamed of my savior and i'm not ashamed of his word his word is perfect it's pure it's preserved as he promised us it's absolutely perfect and i encourage you to be a Bible believer, to stand for the Bible, to speak up for it, to defend it. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to share that with you. So I pray and hope that that's been of some benefit to you, that it's blessed you in some small way. Um, but ultimately, my goal is for us to be firm Bible believers, to love the word, to love the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're a new version reader, please just think about what you're reading. You know, it should worry you. Do you have the perfect word of God in your hand? Do you believe it? And if you don't, why not? You know, what's going on? So anyway, 1 Timothy 3, 1, a beautiful, fantastic verse. And you can see how it connects perfectly with everything, especially the word bishop. Very, very important. But uh, anyway, I tend to the let. I tend to labour the point a bit too much when I record these videos, so apologies, but I uh, can't help myself really. So <laughs> so anyway, right, I, I really appreciate your time spent watching this. It's 23 minutes or something, so um, thank you for spending the time watching this. I would love, as always, to hear your comments on this, and uh, may the Lord bless and keep you safe always. Thank you. Bye.